All right, all right. So let's go ahead. Let's get started. Again, we're going to be going over Microsoft OneNote today. Uh, secondly, I see we got a few more people who joined us, so thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, again, this is going to be an introductory course, so we're going to go over some basics of OneNote, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to be up and running with OneNote in no time. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so for today we are inside of a, micro of a Microsoft Teams live event. You do have the ability to show and hide questions by clicking onto that question mark box. If you do have a question, you can include your name. This is optional. You can type in where it says ask a question and simply hit enter or press the little paper plane icon to send your message over to us. You also have the ability to post your question as anonymous if you so desire. If you'd like to go full screen, you can go ahead and hit those diagonal arrows. You can turn on and off closed captioning by clicking onto that CC button. And you'll know that it's turned on because it's going to light up white. If you click onto the cogwheel, you'll be able to find the settings for your captions and video quality. You can change the volume by clicking onto that microphone icon. And then you also have the ability to play and pause the event at any time. So if you do need to take a break or step away for a few minutes, you can go ahead and pause the event. You don't necessarily have to leave. So you can pause the event and then pick right back up where you left off. Alrighty, so again, you can ask questions utilizing that Q&A function. This is going to be the only way that you have to communicate with us today. Your microphone is going to be automatically muted and your camera will not be in use. At this time, we do ask that you turn up your audio and also to turn on the closed captioning to ensure that you're receiving all of the information from myself today as the presenter. An introduction of myself. My name is Carmelo. I'm a training associate here at Microsoft. I'm also joined by Erica, who's also a training associate, and she's going to be helping me moderate the Q&A and answering any questions or letting me know if anything needs to be demonstrated for us live today. All right, so today we're going to learn about how you can organize your world, gather and enhance your thoughts and share and collaborate inside of OneNote. Hopefully by the end of today's session, we'll be able to show you how to create a notebook, how to collaborate with team notebooks, and then answer any questions that you may have uh, during and throughout the session for today. So with OneNote, you can sort content across notebooks with sections and pages to keep your busy world organized. You can highlight can't miss notes with important and to-do tags, or use the OneNote web clipper to save content with a single click. And with easy to use navigation and search, you can find the information that you need quickly and never miss a moment. Right, so OneNote offers features like highlighting, ink annotations, and more to bring your thoughts to life on a digital page. You can record audio notes, insert online videos, and even add file attachments. And because OneNote syncs across all of your devices, you can pretty much access your notes from anywhere anytime without missing a beat. I do want you to keep in mind that OneNote does also work with um, iOS devices. So if you are using an iPad, iPhone, what have you, uh, it will sync across those devices as well. All right, and we get more done when we work together and sharing and collaborating in OneNote is fairly simple and seamless. You can annotate notes, share ideas, and work together in real time with your coworkers, friends, or family. Whoever you are working with in OneNote, you'll be able to share your notebook out with them with ease. All right, so with all that being said, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into our demonstration. I'm gonna go ahead and unshare my screen really quickly, and then I'm going to reshare it again. I'm just going to bring up my demo account. So please bear with me for one moment. You're going to see that there's going to be a placeholder on your screen saying that the uh, session is going to start in a few minutes. So don't be worried. We're going to come right back.
Alrighty, so now everyone should be able to see my screen that I'm sharing here. Um, I'm currently inside of my demo environment. So before we go ahead and get started, I do want to make a mention of one note. There are uh, quite a few different applications, uh, three different applications for OneNote to be exact. You're going to have OneNote on your desktop, which is just simply called OneNote for Windows. Then you're going to see one that says, possibly that says OneNote for Windows 10. And then we also have the OneNote inside of our web browser. So inside of our web browser, all we have to do is go to office.com and you can pretty much use any web browser of your choosing. Again, if you are using a Mac device um, or Apple device, you can actually go ahead and utilize Safari. You can utilize Google Chrome. In today's session, of course, we're going to be utilizing Microsoft Edge. So all I have to do is type into office.com and then I'll be able to log in with my work credentials. Once I log in, I'm going to be brought to a screen that looks like this. This is our M365 landing page. If I go up to the top left, I'll be able to click onto that waffle icon, which is our app launcher. From here, I can see all of the most commonly used apps that I use most frequently. I do see that I have one note here. Now, for whatever reason, if I don't see that there, I can continue to scroll down to where it says all apps. Once I click onto that, I'll be given a list of applications that I have access to in alphabetical order. So all I have to do is scroll down to the O's and I'll be able to find OneNote. Again, I can go ahead and click onto that and it's going to go ahead and open up for me here inside of a new tab on my web browser. Now currently we are not really inside of the OneNote application. We're still kind of behind the scenes inside of the Microsoft 365 landing page. But from here, we'll be able to create a new notebook. We can see our recent notebooks that we have been working on. If we have any favorited notebooks, we'll be able to find those here. Currently, I do not have any. You'll be able to see your notebooks and the ones that you have created. You'll also be able to see when those notebooks have been created. You'll also be able to see shared with me. So these are notebooks that have been shared by you by other colleagues. And then we can discover. So these are basically going to be notebooks that are available to anyone inside of your organization. All right, so let's go ahead. Oh, and another disclaimer here, you'll be able to see that new notebooks are saved automatically to OneDrive. So the way that the notebooks are going to work, they're going to basically be utilizing that cloud service. So we don't have to continuously keep saving our documents. It's going to save for us automatically via the cloud inside of OneDrive. So let's go ahead and let's create a new notebook. First thing is first, we got to name this notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and name this notebook. Golf demo notebook to keep up with my phonetic alphabet of notebooks that I have created. Hit create. And once I hit create, a new tab is going to open up for us. And now we are truly inside of the OneNote application here on our web browser. All right, so I do also want to make another point here. So I do have one note on my desktop. This one is the one note for Windows. So if I go ahead and I click onto that. It's going to open up for me on my desktop. Currently, I'm inside of this Delta team demo one. If I need to change the notebook, I can click onto this drop down. And I'll be able to go ahead and choose to open other notebooks. Now from here, I'll be able to sign in and search for those different notebooks that I may have. So I can see here the one that I just created, that golf demo notebook. And so that's how you'll be able to get to those different notebooks inside of the desktop application. Now, if you need to create a new one, you'll be able to go into file. And you can hit that new button. So if I click on new, 
it's going to ask me to choose a location to save this particular new notebook. I'm just going to go ahead and choose OneDrive and place it inside of those notebooks. Now it's going to ask me to name the notebook and I can go ahead and name this notebook um, whichever one I, I need to. So let's say hotel demo notebook and then hit create. Right. It's asking if we want to share, I said not now. And so now we are inside of that new hotel demo notebook that we just created on our desktop application. So the way that you can create the notebook on the desktop is a little bit different than how you create it in the web version. For me, the web version is a little bit more easier, but you'll be able to see that inside of OneNote, we have our tab based system. Now, I also want to draw out the differences here uh, between using the desktop version versus the web version. Personally, I like the web version better, but it depends on how you feel. Um, it's going to be your personal preference. So depending on um, which version you like better is the one that you can choose. Um, if you like using the desktop version better, then go ahead and use the desktop version. If you like utilizing the web version better, then by all means, use the web version. But I do want to showcase that inside of our ribbon here on our desktop application versus our web browser, it may look a little bit different. Here in our inside of our web browser, you can see that some of the icons are different in terms of the way that they look. And then also there are certain things inside of these tabs that are kind of in different locations. So on our desktop application, we have like these different tags where it says to do, find tags, outlook tasks. But inside of our web browser, we don't really have that. We have a drop down menu. And once we start inputting information, then we'll be able to access the ribbon and the information inside of the ribbon. Alrighty. So that's kind of the thing I wanted to clear up there. there. There are differences between utilizing these different quote unquote versions of OneNote if you're inside of the web browser versus inside of the desktop application. All right, so for today's demonstration, um, we're going to go ahead and use the web browser. So let me see if I can make this a little bit smaller so that everything fits onto the screen. All right. So the first thing that we can do since we already created our notebook is kind of go over a little bit of the navigation available to us here. We have the ability to add in sections and then we have the ability to add in pages to those sections. Currently right now the notebook is empty and you can see it gives us some directions where it says to click here or press enter to create a new section. So the way that you can think about a one note notebook is kind of like a three ring binder. Inside of your binder, you're probably going to have different subjects. So let's say in terms of like education and thinking of things in that way. Um, let's say if we have like different subjects in school. Um, we have math, science, English, history, etc. So each one of those different subjects will be different sections. And then a page is going to be something that is pertaining to that specific section. So let's say for page one, we have inside of our science class, we have the first chapter, right? Chapter one, which goes over biology, etc. So each new topic is going to be essentially a page. So that's kind of the way that you can organize it and think about it so that it makes a little bit more sense when you utilize OneNote. All right, so first thing is first, let's go ahead and create a new section. Let's just go ahead and click or press here or press enter to create a new section. We're going to give this section a name. I always like using phonetic alphabet. So that I don't get confused, so I'm going to go ahead and call this one alpha section. Let's go ahead and hit OK. Alright, so automatically a page is given to us for that section. This page is untitled. But you can see here that we have the date and time. 
So once we click onto the date and time and we add in a name or a topic, we can go ahead and, and add that in. So I'm going to go ahead and just say alpha page. Using one. Note. All right. So now first thing is first, you're going to be able to have different um, types of. Information that you can input into the OneNote notebook. Now OneNote is basically a free form canvas, so if you utilize other applications like Whiteboard, OneNote is essentially very similar to Whiteboard in that you can pretty much click anywhere onto the screen. You can essentially keep scrolling infinitely and just continuously keep adding in more and more information into each of these different pages. All right, so if you go ahead and you actually click onto the screen, you'll be able to go ahead and start typing. So I can say this is what. What typing looks like. Now I have my um, ribbon hidden here, but I can go ahead and unhide that. So let me go ahead and click onto my drop down. So you can hide the ribbon. And you can see it's set to automatically hide. So if you click onto the little drop down carrot, you'll be able to choose from the classic ribbon or simplified ribbon. And then you can choose always show or automatically hide. Now if we automatically hide it, um, some people feel that it gives them a little bit more room to see and enter in information. Again, this is based on your preference and how you want it to look. I'm going to go ahead and choose always show. All right, so now that we inserted some type of data here into OneNote, inside of our home tab, you can see it has been ungrade. So now we have access to the different types of functions available to us here in the home tab. And much like the other applications inside of Microsoft, usually the home tab is going to consist of the undo button or redo. It's going to consist of the copy and paste. You can change the different fonts, the size of the fonts, and format the fonts as well with these different formatting options. So we, we have bold, italicize, underline, and we also have a highlighter tool. We can change the color of the font. Then we have the format painter. So if we are um, bringing in copied text or data from another document, and we want to keep the same format, we can utilize that format painter and we can actually change the whole entire format depending on that particular format that we're trying to copy in to our document utilizing the format painter. Now, if you don't like any of the formats that you have chosen, you can always go ahead and clear out the format by utilizing that A with the eraser and it's just going to make it a very generic looking um, type of text or document the way that you see how it looks now. Now we also have this ellipses. And usually if you see an ellipsis, that means that there's some more options available to us. From here, we can see that we can add in a subscript. So if we're utilizing mathematical equations and we need to insert a subscript or a superscript, we can do that. And then we have our strike through format as well. Next, we have the ability to add in bullet points and numbered lists. And we have some more paragraph formatting here, so we can either decrease indentation or increase, so we can move to the left or to the right, or we can center and align our paragraph alignment here, so we can align to the left, center, or right. right we have our paragraph spacing. So if we do have a bunch of text type data, uh, we'll be able to kind of Make it look very similar to a Word document if that's what we want it to look like. All right. So the next thing we have here is our styles. Where again, it, if this looks familiar, it should look familiar if you've ever used the Word application because all of these are coming straight out of Word. So inside of our styles, we have different heading types. So we have like heading one, two, and these are going to help us to kind of create essentially different sections within the page here. So if we utilize a heading one, 
we can essentially create like a drop down menu utilizing that heading. All right now we have our tags. So if we go ahead and click onto the drop down, we're going to see that we have access to all of our tags here inside of OneNote, and there's a bunch, uh, but some of the more useful tags are going to be inside of to do important and then um, if you have any other information like address etc you can utilize those different tags as well and then we have our spell check so we can click onto that and it'll check the spelling for us we can hide any spelling errors set proofing language and then autocorrect options and then inside of OneNote, we do also offer a dictation feature. This is one of our accessibility features. Um, so if you may have a hard time, depending on the size of your screen or your monitor, sometimes it may be difficult to see what the text is. Or even for us to type. That's where the dictation will come in handy and we'll be able to utilize this and use our microphone to essentially type for us. All right, next we have our insert tab. Again, this is going to be the area where we can insert different types of data. So we have a table, we can insert files, pictures, different links to web pages, audio notes, different symbols, and these symbols are going to consist of mathematical symbols and other random symbols here like a smiley face or a heart. And you can click where it says more symbols and get a whole um, plethora of different symbols available to us here. All right, we have Math Assistant, which is going to be useful if we again, if we're utilizing complex mathematical equations that we need to either solve or we just want to showcase, um, we can go ahead and utilize those. And then some emojis as well. The ellipses gives us some more options where we can add in office add ins, stickers, and then our meeting details. Meeting details is basically going to allow for us to put in the meeting details from Outlook. So let's say if we have a Teams meeting that we have in an hour or so, and we want to place it into this notebook so that anyone who has access to it will know, hey, there's a meeting today. Uh, we can go ahead and insert those meeting details directly from Outlook. All right, next we have our draw. And the cool thing about OneNote is if you do have a device that utilizes a stylus or a touchscreen device, where you can actually touch or draw onto the device with a pen or a stylus. Um, OneNote um, actually will allow, allow for you to go ahead and handwrite as if you were really handwriting inside of a notebook. Now you can choose if you choose the uh, cursor with with the uh, line here, you'll be able to basically have that normal view with the cursor. We do offer a lasso tool where we can go ahead and kind of highlight and select different data. We have our eraser. And then we have our pen option, highlighter option. And if we don't have a stylus, we can actually still utilize our touch screen with our finger and utilize touch to draw. All right, if we click onto the pen. You'll be able to see it automatically goes to that touch to draw option. And then I can choose a different color for the pen. I have a little color palette here where I can choose different colors as well beyond the standard ones that we see here. So I do have like this gold or orange color, a bright neon yellow, green, etc. So you can choose different colors as well for the pen. All right, you can also choose the thickness of how you want the pen to draw. By default, it's going to be set to this 0 0.07 millimeter thickness, but you can go ahead and make it thicker if need be. And we have our math assistant here as well. Next, we have our view tab where we have another accessibility feature, which is our immersive reader. And actually inside of this view tab, there are quite a few different um, options here for accessibility, but we have something here called immersive reader where it'll basically read out the text to us inside of the page. We can zoom in and out from here. We can change the page color. And if we click onto the drop down, we have a number of different colors to choose from. So let's say if we wanted it to be like a yellow color, we can go ahead and choose that. And you'll see that it changes the page color to yellow. We can change it to this greenish blue color. 
whatever color we want or just have no color. Just keep it white and black as standard. We can also insert rule lines to make it look more legitly like a notebook. We have grid lines as well. For the rule lines, you have different um, rules or styles, right? So we have the narrow ruled, college rule, standard, and then wide. For grid lines, we have small, medium, large, and then very large. But let's see what it looks like. College ruled. You can change the color. Now it definitely looks like a real notebook. All right. We also have our different versions, i.e. our version histories of what our pages look like. We have our ellipsy. We can see the authors and delete certain notes. And then another ellipsy where we can check our accessibility to ensure that this particular OneNote notebook um, page is accessible to everyone. Right. And then lastly here, we have our help section where if we go ahead and click on to help, we'll be able to get some of that support information right here on the web pertaining to OneNote. We can see some featured help, get started with uh, the new OneNote, search your notes and navigate results, etc. And you can also just type in here at the very top uh, for particular or specific help that you may be needing. All right. Right here in the very middle, we kind of have like a search bar or a search tool. So you can see here it says, tell me what you want to do. So essentially what this is going to allow for us to do is for us to type in a particular function that we're trying to do, let's say something like picture. I can see here that it's going to give me some different actions. I can get help or I can do something here called a smart lookup. Let's go ahead and choose get help first. And you can see here, it basically gives us step by step instructions on how to insert a picture into OneNote. So depending again on the type of help or the type of action that we're trying to perform and we're having difficulty, we can go ahead and type it in where it says, tell me what you want to do. All righty. Now you can see here we have this big gigantic button that says editing, but we can change it to a view and view the file to see what it will look like for other people. And then we can open up this particular OneNote notebook inside of the desktop application. Next, we have that little cloud icon indicating that this is synced and being saved automatically for us to the cloud. And then we have our share button where we can either share the entire notebook copy a link to the notebook, and then manage access. All right, I do want to take a quick pause, see if we have any questions, comments, um, or if you would like for us to go over anything again, go ahead, let us know inside of the Q&A, and let's take about a minute or so to see if there are any questions. Alrighty, so I'm not seeing any new questions or anything. So let's go ahead and let's begin to kind of utilize our notebook here. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and add in some more sections. Probable section. And then let's add in one more. Charlie. OK. And for each of these sections, let's add in a few different pages. So Alpha already has our Alpha page. Let's go ahead and make a Bravo page. Go back to my draw, switch my tool here. And use that eraser to get rid of that little dot that I drew. All right, so let's go ahead and insert a title. 
course, this one is going to be called Bravo page. Awesome, and let's add in one more. Traffic page. All right, so now inside of our sections, if you notice each one of these are kind of color coordinated. Now we can change those colors so we can actually do a right click onto that section. We'll be able to rename the section, delete the section, change the color if need be. So if we know that a particular color or if we want to use a particular color for that section just to identify it fairly quickly, we'll be able to do that. So let's say for alpha section, I want it to be blue. Bravo section, I'm going to go ahead and change this color to green. And then let's keep Charlie as red. All right now we can also do another right click inside of our pages. And you'll be able to see that we can copy the page, paste it when we copy it, delete, move or copy. Add another page. Make certain pages a sub page or promote the sub page, show versions a link to the page and then open in a new tab. So now if I go below here to that Bravo page, I'm going to see that I have the ability to make this Bravo page a sub page of Alpha page. And all that is going to do is it's basically going to place a little indentation onto the name so that I have that visual identity of Alpha and Bravo kind of being synchronous. All right, so these two go hand in hand. Alpha is the main page. Bravo is the sub page of Alpha. I can also essentially make a sub page to a sub page. So now if I go into Charlie, let's say, for example, I can go ahead and make that a sub page. And then also make it a sub page again. So now Charlie goes into Bravo, Bravo goes into Alpha. Right, and then you can see those indentations there. All right, so we do have a little bit of functionality here on how, again, we want to organize our pages and our sections. Um, but let's go ahead and let's start inputting some different types of data into our OneNote. So we already have this text box here where we can actually go ahead and kind of hover over it at the, at the very top. We can move it around and place it to where we need it to be. So we can kind of reorganize and reorder where we want the text box. And that's going to go the same for any object that we input here inside of OneNote. All right, so let's go ahead and go into insert where we're gonna be able to insert pretty much all of our different types of data. I'm gonna insert a table. And so once I click onto table, I get to choose the size of the table that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a four by four table. All right, so now you can notice that it basically put that table right inside of that text box. If I didn't want it to be like that, I can go back into my home and undo. And ensure that I have a new area that I'm trying to incorporate that table into. So let's go ahead and move this down a little bit and see if I can insert that one again. Perfect, so now insert it right here, right where I wanted, I can move this around and reorder it and place it to where I need it to be. And you can see I can basically just infinitely just keep dragging this down and it'll just keep going and going and going and I can just bring it back up so I can move this around to wherever location I need it to be. Now I can actually start and begin to type inside of the table, but you may have noticed or you may not that once I add in different types of data, and data types. So depending on what it is, I'm going to be given new tabs. So because I inserted this table, I now have this table tab. So if I go ahead and I click onto that table tab, I'll be able to select the whole entire table, select a specific column, row, or just a specific cell. I have the ability now to delete the entire table, column, or row. I can insert a new column or row either above or below the table or left or right of whatever row that I'm in. I can change the color of the table so I have 
all of these different colors available to me, and then I have my standard colors, of course. And then I can hide the borders if I don't want to see them. Or I can click onto that again, and it's going to show me the borders for that table. And I can actually go ahead and start inputting data in here. So let's say one, two, and I'm just hitting tab, three, and then Q4. And let's say we're talking about something like budget. Sales. And then. Returns. So we can kind of organize this table and begin to actually add in. Um, different. Information, so let's say here in Q1. I want to go ahead and insert some shading. Gonna make that green. So I can choose the specific cells, or I can select the whole entire row and change the shading for the whole row. All right, so let's go back into insert. And let's go ahead and insert a file. So inside of OneDrive, you will have the ability to insert um, specific files. So I can go ahead and click onto that. You can see here that I can either insert a file as an attachment or as a printout via PDF. So it's going to be kind of like a PDF version of that file. So let's go ahead and do both. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a file attachment. I'm just going to go ahead and choose a random file that I have here on my desktop. So let's go into OneDrive and let's pick this Alpha Word document. Hit open. And now we can see that that Word document has been inserted. And I can go ahead and again move this around and place it to where I need it to be. And now the cool thing is I can actually click onto this. And let's do a double click. And you'll see here that it's going to ask me if I want to download this file from OneNote and do I want to download a copy. Either yes, download, or no, cancel. All right, so I can actually insert that file there, double click on it, and I will, whoever has access to this uh, OneNote document will be able to go in there and actually download that file if need be. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like to insert a printout. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Insert File Printout. Let's go ahead and use that Word demo document again and hit Open. All right, so now we can see what's going on here. It's basically inputting the actual document and what's inside of the document into my OneNote here. So all of the information for that document is all inside of OneNote right now. All right, now of course I can kind of change the way this looks. I can make it larger or smaller. Let's say I need to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller so that it fits onto the actual OneNote area, I can do that. I can kind of squeeze it together. So you can see I can kind of change the way that it looks. And next, I have this picture tab whenever I insert that PDF. It's basically recognizing it as a picture. So I can click onto that. I can choose to crop it, change the height, width, and then lock the aspect ratio, or set this picture as a background um, if need be. Right now, I can actually do a right click here. And I'll be able to get rid of this copy, paste, and then paste the text only. Smart lookup on the picture, add in alternative text, set it as a background, and then save this particular picture onto my desktop if need be. Let's go ahead and just get rid of that for now. Let's see what goes on. All right, so I got rid of that whole entire essentially PDF printout, but you can do that again. That's inside a file and you can insert the printout from there. All right, next we have the pictures where we can insert a picture from a file, from a camera or from online. So from the file. 
of course, we can go ahead and look at certain pictures. Open. Again, we're going to be given that picture tab for that picture so we can see right here again. Same information when we inserted that PDF. And we can, of course, go ahead and kind of change the way that it looks, make it bigger, smaller. And we can move it around onto the actual document. And place it to where we need it to be. All right, we can also insert links. So if we actually click onto that, you'll be able to see where it says display text. So this is basically what we call a text to display link. On the bottom part is where we insert the address for that link. So let's say if we needed to insert a web page. Let's go ahead and just. Search for Microsoft. And we wanted to insert this Microsoft.com web page. We can do that. We can go up to where our link is here. Right click. Copy. Go back into our notebook. Add in that address. And then what do we want this to be called? I can say. Microsoft. Home page. And then hit insert. All right, so now we inserted that Microsoft homepage link right here into our document. Again, if I click onto that, it's going to actually open up the link inside of my browser. So I'm going to go ahead and click onto it, see if it works. Perfect. So now it works. It takes us to that web page that we need to be. Let's go ahead and actually click on that again. And let's say if we needed or we wanted to insert certain information from this web page into our uh, OneNote and not the entire page. If we click onto and do a right click onto the actual image or whatever it is that we're trying to save, we can go ahead and either select the web page, do a web capture. Of course, we can copy the image or save it as, but let's go ahead and Click this web capture one and let's say I wanted to just. Keep the image of these laptops here. OK, let's go down and go. Now from here, I'm able to copy. I can actually write directly onto this image or do a visual search. I'm going to go ahead and just hit copy. And I can just input that image here into OneNote. Go ahead and paste. Taking a little while for it to recognize it, but it should come up and there we go. So now we got our picture from our web page there as well. All right, so we can kind of bring in those different information. So if we don't want to have the whole entire web page there, we can kind of take snippets of that web page and insert it here into OneNote as well. All right, so that's how we'll be able to insert a link. Next, we can insert audio. Unfortunately, inside of my demo account doesn't recognize audio, so I won't be able to use that today. And then, of course, we have our symbols and then math assistant. So let's go ahead and try this math assistant out. You can see here, write your equation in ink or type it using a keyboard. Select your equation and then tap the math button. Let's go ahead and try it out. I'm going to just put something really, really simple. Let's say I want to put in 5 times 5 equals. Go into our draw, use our lasso tool so we can select. It allows us to. Okay, 
can just highlight. Hit that math button. And now we can see that it recognizes it five times five. We can select an action. Do we want to evaluate? Differentiate or integrate? Let's go ahead and evaluate. And now we can see it gives us some information here. It just looks like it's trying to utilize like high, higher level math here. Uh, so it's like 5x and then a subscript of 5. And of course, you can kind of fix it to how you want it to be. And we can also generate practice quizzes here. All right, so we'll be able to sign in and then we can generate pack practice quizzes for math. Right. And you can see for some of them as well. So let's just say like for this one right here. It has like specific steps on how it got to the solution for whatever it is that you're trying to do. But that's basically how the math assistant works. Um, for me personally, actually I've, I've used this a lot in my past. It does usually work pretty well. Um, when you're writing. If you're typing in the information, sometimes it doesn't understand what you're trying to do. But when you're actually writing and utilizing a stylus or the finger or the touch, um, it actually recognizes what you're trying to do pretty well, and it actually really does work. Um, so I just want you to keep that in mind there. Alrighty, so we pretty much inserted all the different types of data that we can insert here. Um, but let's go ahead and go into our Bravo page. So inside of here, let's say if we needed to insert some more information, perhaps we have a meeting. I want to go back into my home area. Um, let's insert some different tags and say that something is important or we can create a to do list. Let's go ahead and create a to do list and say. Step one, if I hit enter, it's automatically going to give me another Checkbox there, step two, and then step three. So step one, create new OneNote notebook. Step two, share notebook. And then step three, create meeting. All right, so now we have our to do list here and we can actually go and click onto the box and check and mark off whenever we have finished with our to do list. And this is actually synchronizing inside of Outlook as well. So it's going to create this to do list for you inside of Outlook as well. And you'll be able to see it there too. So I can see all these different steps and I can mark them off as either being done or just leave it unchecked and not done. All right, we can also mark things as important. So let's say, for example, our step three here is something that's important. I can go ahead and click important. And it's going to go ahead and add that star right next to there for me as well. So now I know that this is probably the most important step that I created so far. And so I have to make sure that I get that done no matter what. So you can mark it with that star as important. Right, so let's go ahead and let's go back into insert. And let's choose our meetings and we'll see how we can import the meeting details and the links here for a meeting inside of OneNote. Sometimes this works for me here in the web browser, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so I may have to use the desktop app, but let's go ahead and try it out. So I can go ahead and choose meetings. It's going to ask me to select a meeting below. So First, it's showing me the meetings for today, but I can go ahead and choose a different date if need be. Maybe I need to choose one for the 30th. And then I can go ahead and insert that meeting. Right there. So now it basically inserted the meeting information. And this is coming, so it's inside of Outlook. The meeting is going to be held on 1230, 2022 at 1 p.m. Location, it's an Outlook item. 
If there was any information or a message, it will show up here. And then we have our links for the meeting right here as well. We can actually click onto those links and be able to join the meeting inside of Teams. We'll be able to see who the participants are and if there are any notes for the meeting as well. All right, so that's how we'll be able to insert these meeting details inside of our page. All right, so for the last portion here, I want to talk about how we can kind of link these different sections together with other sections. So let's say we just had some random information here. And we want to be able to kind of share the information from this page. To Bravo page, I can do that so I can go ahead and say in this one. Maybe for my meeting notes. I can say. Please. See. And let's go ahead and do a right click. Copy the link to this page. And let's insert a link. I can add the address. Charlie page. Insert. All right, so now for my notes, it says please see Charlie page. And I can continue. Took away my link there. The insert. Charlie page. Let's just leave it at that for now. And then I have this link that I can actually click on. So when I actually click onto that, it's just going to take me directly here to the Charlie page. Random info. For meeting. All right, and I can kind of link those different uh, pages together within the sections, and I can also link different sections as well. So I can copy a link to the section. And I can say, for example, for Bravo page. So we can see Charlie page, so we go into Charlie page, random right meeting info. The. Insert. Say Bravo. Section. Right, and now we can click onto that and it'll bring us into the Bravo section, which of course we don't have anything yet, but once we input some information there, it'll make more sense. All right, so we can also link different sections or pages inside of our OneNote. Now, if you had another OneNote that you wanted people to be able to view and go, you can actually go into those other OneNotes uh, notebooks and put those different links in there as well, and it'll go directly to that other notebook as well. So you can link other notebooks and sections from other notebooks as well. All right, so last thing we're going to talk about here is being able to share out our notebook to our colleagues once we're done. And we have a few ways that we can do that. We can go ahead and press the share button. Either share the entire notebook, copy a link to the notebook, and of course we have that manage access sec section. And then we also have Teams. So when we're inside of Teams, we can either share our notebook via the chat, and we can add it as a tab. So let's say we wanted to add a tab here for our OneNote notebook. We'll be able to see right here that we can add that in. Once we click onto that plus button, we'll be able to go ahead and search and find our notebook. And we can either create a new section for the notebook or just import the whole entire notebook as it is. Or we can choose specific pages from the notebook that we want to share out here. Let's go ahead and choose this alpha section and hit save. All right, so now I basically shared this out with one of my colleagues here. 
and she'll be able to go in and check out what's the, what the information is inside of this notebook. And she can click onto the links and everything as well, and it all should work right here inside of Teams. Now we can also do the same thing here inside of the Teams area in the channel where we can link and pretty much add in different tabs for those OneNote notebooks. Let's go ahead and use one that doesn't have one already, my Power Platform demo. And then let's go ahead and hit that plus button. Running a little slow. One note. All right. And then again, we'll be basically be able to do it the same way where we can choose the notebook and then add in those different pages or sections as need be. But that's how we'll be able to share it out here inside of Teams, which is my personal preference. Now you can also share the entire notebook from right here. And it's just going to ask you to insert the name, group, or email. And you can also change the permissions uh, for how you want to share it out. So let's say right here it says anyone with the link can edit. Maybe I don't want this, or sometimes this is not even available for us. So we can see people in our organization, people with existing access, and then specific people. Hit apply. And let's add in our colleague again. And hit send. All right, so now she has access to that entire notebook. All right, so I know we're about a minute over, but I do want to take a pause here, see if we have any questions, comments, or if there's anything that we would need uh, to go ahead and touch on again. So I'll go ahead and see um, if we have anything inside of the Q&A. I just see one comment here. Someone says, I hope that we can uh, get certificates for completed trainings in the future. I do hope so as well. Um, that can definitely be something that uh, your point of contact can reach out to our um, success account managers and kind of talk about and see if there are any options for that. Uh, hopefully it, it'll it'll be great if we had that in the future. I do hope so too. All right, so I'm not seeing anything else come in. So with that being said, I do want to say thank you all for being here today, sticking with me. I hope that you learned something new and interesting about OneNote and the different things that you can do. Um, and I do hope that I did see a question earlier about adding a tab uh, to the team site. Hopefully um, you're able to understand how to do that again inside of Teams. All you have to do is go to that plus button right up here. Once it loads up, you can choose OneNote, and then you'll be able to choose the notebook, and then you can either choose a specific section or a specific page from that notebook or just the whole notebook as a whole. So if I choose the whole entire notebook, I can go ahead and hit save. And now everyone on that team will have access to the whole entire notebook. Alrighty. Awesome. So with that being said, again, thank you all very much, and I do hope that you enjoyed the rest of your week and have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care, everyone.